Alright you guys, so this is our ANOVA inverter here. And what we're looking at specifically now is the connector here for the encoder. So the first thing that we notice is that of the seven pins um, that are on the plug, only six of them are in use. And that makes perfect sense when you think about it. We need a power and a ground for the encoder and an A and a B signal channel. Then we need two wires for a, a motor temperature sensor, giving us a total of six wires in here. So this wire um, comes up here and plugs into the logic PCB on the ANOVA inverter. So the first thing that we want to do here is we want to figure out which of these pins here is a ground and if we're lucky we'll find two of them are grounds so let's see what happens simple multimeter continuity tester what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one probe just on the metal chassis of the inverter which from previously looking around it um, tells us that this is system ground I'm going to have a look around some of these pins here and see if any of them, right, okay, there's one, is, a, is an absolute short to ground, which is perfect, so the white wire is a ground, I'm going to make a note of that, white is ground, so then we know the white is ground, so let's see if anything else is not oh we've another one all right this is some basic reverse engineering tricks here that one's also yeah absolute dead short to ground and uh, unfortunately the way they have a lot of these things end up being is they're just very tight so we'll have a look Okay, so it looks like the blue wire uh, is a ground and the white wire is a ground. So the blue and a white as ground. Okay, so just remove some cable ties and a bit of heat shrink from here. I've got this multi plug out. As we can see here on this part, hopefully, we have six wires here. Um, but it looks like unfortunately this multi plug is shared. I don't know why someone did that. It's not something I would do. Um, and we have uh, six wires here going down to our encoder plug. And we know that the white and the blue are um, grounds. So, this is our Nova Inverter logic board. It's V14200A, copyright 2002, and all the systems. So, it's very heavily uh, conformal coated. It's the first thing that I would notice here. Um, there's good news is there's a lot of test points on it. Um, so somebody that was designing this had a degree of sense and they were able to um, pretty much say, well, we need test points on here for actually
testing and reworking the boards. There's some uh, power electronics here, look very like buck and boost converters and some transistors. In fact, here I can see some one that says M15V, M5V, P5V, so probably minus 15 volts, minus 5 volts, positive 5 volts. Um, some other components going around here. But anyway, um, we're really interested in the uh, connectors in this area here. And uh, let's see if we can read some of these out for you guys. And then we'll try and go through a process where we can identify maybe what some of these signals do uh, for our encoder. So, working around this area here, um, I have, for example, I have E pre CHG1, I have another pre charge, I have E main 1, E temp 1, E temp 1. So, I have two wires here to have something to do with temperature sensing. I have one here that says um, EENC power 1, so that could be encoder power 1. Okay, so we know what three of the wires do. We, we, we know what three of the six wires do. We know the green wire supplies power. Uh, we know that the blue and the white wires are ground. So that means that we have uh, two wires for the encoder channels. We have one wire then for the temperature sensor. Now, determining the temperature sensor wire, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll actually do at the, mo the motor. We should be able to use a resistance measurement to determine that. But in the meantime, we still want to figure out a few more things here. Um, and what we want to do is we want to have a look and see uh, if we can figure out um, what some of these voltages are. Now, one thing that we could do is we could try to power up this card. Um, now, there's many ways to do that, but with this kind of a system here, uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot going on here. I'm not really ready to get in, in, involved um, <coughs> with that part of the unit as yet. So, okay, so how do we determine then, I suppose, really what the supply voltage is? Well, if we have a look at some of the random ICs on here, you will see that very close to each one, there's a capacitor. Now that'll be the decoupling capacitor for um, that particular de 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 device. So I'm gonna just pick this device here. It's U9, it's a capacitor. Uh, there's two caps here, I suppose. One could be the de de decoupler. I'm gonna assume it's this C45 here. And the first thing I'm going to do is, I know I have a ground here. I'm going to see, I'm going to make sure I can get a solid ground. Because this conformal coating is a real pain. And I'm going to, uh, just there's my ground. So I know that that's the ground for that capacitor. Now, We'd be able to check with a data sheet, but I'm pretty sure that most of these are uh, these ICs, uh, particularly given the vintage of this uh, design, will be five volts. So if we know that this C45 capacitor here has a ground here, I'm pretty sure that the other side of it will be five volts. So if I go to encoder power, which we know is our uh, green wire, but I'll just use the test point. We go to the other side of the capacitor, lo and behold, we get a uh, complete circuit telling us that our encoder power will be at plus 5 volts. I'll just double check uh, what this device is in a minute. I'll just get a data sheet. And if we really want to be 100% sure, we can look at which is the VCC and the ground pins for this, for this part. 
and then verify that they're connected to this C45 and back to our encoder power. But what I'm going to do next is um, I'm going to see if we can remove this uh, this socket from the inverter because this is one damn heavy inverter and uh, I don't feel like hauling it up and down the stairs so as usual there's some gunk here just holding the wire onto a bracket so I'm just going to cut through that with the knife and freeze that up um, looks like they've just grounded the uh, screen in the wire just onto a tag here so I'm just gonna whip that off put the screw back in here and uh, we should be able to hopefully determine then what the other signals actually do when we're out at the motor. Now, so unfortunately they've split this uh, plug into a number of different kind of ways here. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is, uh, rather than mess about trying to trace this harness back and disconnect everything, um, which would be a little bit problematic by the looks of it, I'm going to just cut this plug in two. I should still be able to put it all back in here in some fashion if I ever needed to. I don't ever see myself using this logic board. Um, I can see myself, you know, attempting to use the driver board, certainly, uh, but not the logic board. Uh, attempting to use that logic board, I think, Apart from anything, even if it worked fine, would limit me to whatever parameters were originally, uh, you know, installed within this unit. And my experience of these van conversions has been that the inverters have been set up in a very uh, limited manner. Uh, would be the kindest word that I could think of at the minute. So I'm going to go ahead here with sort of sharp snips. I'm just going to try and split this plug and, well, what do you know, beginner's luck. Um, so I just split the plug easily and it means that I now have my six wires from my inverter uh, completely separated. So, what I should be able to do now is, I'm going to try and slide the uh, whole, this big whole heatsink affair over here. Uh, to the edge of my little table and I should then be able to identify the four screws holding that in the bottom. I know this is a bit of a it's kind of probably not getting the best angle here. I'm gonna see if I can get in underneath these screws and unscrew them. And there's one coming out and that should let me remove the encoder um, socket from the inverter here and uh, the idea being that we can just go out to the motor then and uh, plug it into it
Okay. There we go. There's our heavy duty industrialized encoder plug, folks. So now we we can go out to the motor and we can plug this guy in. Whoopee.